All right, hey guys, how is it going? This is Mark from visualfactspro.com and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to create a realistic forest fire inside of After Effects. I shared this composition on Reddit and there was a lot of positive comments so I thought I would make a tutorial for this. I will be using our forest fire volume 1 pack and also our large ground fire elements. All right, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to create a new composition by pressing Ctrl and N and straight away I'm going to create a solid coolie background and have it as completely black. I'm going to drag this into create a new composition of this forest stock image. After that I'm going to bring in the actual composition. I'm going to scale it down to around here and I'm going to do a quick rotoscope. Alright and now I'm going to scale this back up, move it to the left, something like this. Then I'm going to draw a new mask. I'm going to press G to change to my pen tool. I'm going to draw something like that. Then I'm going to press M and on mask 2 change from add to intersect. Then I'm going to press Y and change its anchor point to around here. I'm going to press W and change the rotation slightly. And for now I'm going to do the same with my background and change the background to be transparent in my preview. And I'm going to bring in the next stock image and this is these branches. I'm going to press S and scale it down. And these are the branches that we're going to put as a foundation for our main branches fire elements. So I'm going to put it somewhere around here like a tree branches will be coming out. Then I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Ctrl and D and bring it down below. You can also scale it up or down. Then as you can see we got some of these hard edges uh, where the stock image ends. So to cover that we're going to bring in another stock image that I just called grass. I'm going to scale it down, move it somewhere around here. You can also squeeze them slightly, make them taller. I'm just going to slightly bring them down here. Then I'm also going to duplicate these branches, bring it to the top and bring it down beneath our stock image and I'm going to add that to the background around here around there and I'm going to press S and delete this minus signal so it flips back to its original side and I'm going to maybe bring it up here as another tree would be coming through. I'm going to duplicate that again. I'm just going to bring it down here. You want to always create different kind of positions and rotations for them. I'm going to position this here. Then I'm going to duplicate this one more time. I'm going to actually scale it up this time, rotate it and I'm going to move it down here as these branches kind of sticking out from below our framing. In my case, I also added some more stock elements to be in front on the left side around here, but you can be as creative as you want with these stock assets. You want to make sure that there is enough variety around the framing so it doesn't look repetitive or not realistic. I'm going to duplicate this weed one, bring it down to the bottom of the layers, I'm going to scale it down, have it around here. I also shot these raw elements, which I'm going to add as well. And of course, again, for all these, there will be a link in the description for you to download and follow along gonna scale it down and I'm just gonna rotate it and just bring it down here scale it down gonna add to these branches already then I'm gonna duplicate it and again just move it upwards change its time code then I'm going to bring in the branches raw number two beneath it and I'm gonna scale it down I'm gonna move the time code slightly move it somewhere around here then make a duplicate again slightly scale it up somewhere maybe around there move the time code again so the movement isn't repetitive then I'm going to duplicate the smaller one and move it to the left maybe press S and flip it horizontally there we go something like that all right and now I'm going to come into these individual layers I'm going to go into effects and presets search for levels in color correction drag levels on this layer that you isolated and just completely break down the white so it becomes a silhouette. Then I'm going to copy it with Ctrl and C, press all of these elements apart from the background and paste it. Then coming out of the isolated view, as you can see, now this whole scene is in a silhouette. So now we can start on building our fire elements. And again, there will be a link in the description for this forest fire element so you can get it and start using it straight away. So I'm going to bring in our branches fire number one and I'm going to isolate it, press S and scale it down. I'm going to change from transparent view to just black and going to move slightly forward so the fire is already ignited. Going to come out of isolated view and going to turn back on transparent grid. Going to bring this fire element on top of this cut off tree. Going to have it something like that. And to continue, I'm actually straight away going to add our smoke elements. So I'm going to bring smoke number eight to create a new separate composition. Then I'm going to bring in this composition above our background. I'm going to come back into this composition. I'm going to bring in another levels effect and I'm going to increase it until the background instead of gray, it becomes black. 
Then I'm gonna search for unmold and bring it on top and this will make it transparent. I'm gonna isolate it. So we'll move it into position and scale it up and then I'll just change the time code. After this, I'm going to search for an effect called tint, break it on the smoke layer and change the white map to something orange. I'm gonna de-isolate it and now our scene is much more visible. We don't have to bring in our transparent background. I'm going to duplicate this smoke layer and I'm going to move it forward. I'm going to isolate to see better. Move it forward to maybe somewhere like here. I'm going to press T that brings up the opacity. I'm going to maybe bring it down to 50%. So that just adds another layer of smoke. I'm going to move forward slightly more. And on this top smoke element, I'm also going to change its color to something like a darker red. And before we continue adding our fire elements, I'm going to create a new adjustment layer and change its name to glow. Then I'm going to search for the effect cool glow. And first of all, we're going to change the glow colors to be A and B colors. And also going to change the color looping to sawtooth A is bigger than B. Then I'm going to change the color B to orange. And with this, we are just going to focus on the highlights of our fire element. I'm going to change the glow intensity to something smaller like 0.6 gonna bring down the glow threshold to around 50 so it affects more of these highlights and I'm also change the glow radius to something bigger maybe 25 and then we're going to duplicate our glow element by pressing on the effect and control and D with this second glow element we're going to increase the glow radius to something much bigger maybe something 325 so this spreads the glow around quite a bit then I'm going to change the glow threshold to around 30 and I'm going to set its glow intensity back to default, so 1. So this is before and after. And this focuses on giving it that natural glow around the whole fire element. And lastly, we're going to duplicate the glow element again. I'm going to change the glow threshold to 40 and I'm going to increase the glow radius to even something bigger, maybe 640. And more importantly, we're going to change the color B to something of a more red something like that and you can also increase the glow intensity to something bigger maybe 1.5 or 4 all right and this is quite important to see where your fire works very well in my opinion before going into adding the rest of the fire elements so i'm going to continue working on this trunk to add more fire elements to it so i'm going to bring in our tree trunk fire number 2a beneath our branches fire element I'm gonna isolate it, press S and scale it down. Then move forward with the time code. De-isolate it and move it slightly into position. If the glow affects your preview too much, then you can turn it off, continue without it, and then turn it back on to preview. Also for some of the elements, I've actually made the frame rate for them to be 24. And this will actually slow down your fire element because these are either 50 or 60 frames per second. So I'm gonna scale up this fire trunk element you can turn on your glow again to see what it looks like with your glow on. Then I'm going to grab another tree trunk element, tree trunk fire number three, maybe C. Isolate it and scale it down. And as you can see, this is below our stock image element. So it's behind it and you can place it. So the fire just kind of wraps around its edges. Then let's add another one, scale it down. This is more of a wilder fire. So I'm gonna scale it down. All right, that looks very good to me. Then next, I'm going to focus on adding some ground fire elements. So let's go into that folder. Let's grab the large ground fire number one. And as you can see, the frame rate for this as well set to 24, but it was originally 60. I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to drag and drop it above our smoke elements, but behind all these other layers. Get it down, move forward in time and try to find where the flames are already the highest. I'm going to drag it to the bottom of our framing. Let's bring another one in, large ground fan number two, above this layer. I'm going to duplicate this ground fire too. I'm going to isolate it, just move it in time slightly forward. I'm going to move it to its side. So this is going to be our background fire element for the right part. And for now, I'm going to turn off our glow again and slightly change the color of these fire elements. So I'm going to search for an effect called hue and saturation, drag it and drop it onto the first fire element. And I'm going to go slightly forward in our master hue to maybe around nine. And that changes the color of our fire 
to use something similar to the forest fire elements. I'm going to copy these to the other ones and have a look at our glow. As you can see, the color of these fires are fitting these other fire elements much better. And now let's move on to adding fire to these branches. For that, let's bring in branches fire number three above these two branches elements that would be on the side. Slightly rotate it and scale it down to the sizes of these branches. You can rotate it slightly, but be careful not to rotate it too much that it looks off to like a natural gravity. So try to keep that in mind. Something like that looks very good to me. As you can see, these branches line up with the branches that has the alpha on the fire element. Let's bring in another one below it somewhere around there scale it up slightly and now i'm gonna add a couple more Alright, as you can see, I've added a couple more fire elements and next I'm going to bring up these branches raw elements above our fire elements so you can see it's behind it. Alright, as you can see, we are already getting there. But before I continue again, I want to create a new adjustment layer and call this temporary grade. I always like to do a temporary grade that's just very basic. And in this case, I'm going to bring in Lumetri colors, come into basics and increase the contrast by 15, decrease the saturation to around 98, and also add a curves adjustment at two points and create an S curve to add more contrast to it. You can also decrease the saturation if it's too much. So we can see what the highlights would look like on the fireman's with more contrast to them. So I'm going to add our last fire element and it's going to be this rather large branches fire element. And I want it to be on top of these two branches element because as you can see this element cuts off here. And I also believe this bit needs a little bit more fire. So scale it down and move it to where you want it to be. I'm going to keep it quite large. This also creates a very nice silhouette for these plants. And as you can see these have a lot of detail in them. Let's turn back our glow and our grade and that looks very good to me. You can also add some heat elements and for that you need to create a new adjustment layer. Let's rename this to heat and you can either use the heat distortion plugin by Video Copilot or you can create your own using fractal noise and displacement maps. So let me show you the settings I used for the heat distortion. I used one distortion amount and I use zero heat amount and this has just a very small amount. You don't want to overdo it because otherwise it's going to be too distracting. And to create the heat distortion completely in After Effects, I will have a separate tutorial coming for that. But our final touch is adding fire embers. So for that, we're going to be using our fire embers and sparks volume one elements. First, we're going to change its FPS to 24. Then I'm going to go down and place our first fire embers element above our large ground fire element. So it looks like it's in the middle. Let me isolate that. And we can come into our smoke element and copy the levels effect. Place it on our fire embers asset. We can scale it down. We can use the screen blending mode to only show our fire embers. So we have our first fire embers emitting from the fire. Let's add another one. Let's use fire embers mid number one. Let's place it above. Copy and paste the levels effect into the fire embers and change the blending mode to screen. You can isolate it to see better. Scale it down. As you can see, there's a black box that's rather darker than what it should be. So for that, we can actually come into this levels effect and change the histogram do something lighter so let's try maybe 0 0.06 and do this for the other one and that way they disappear and they use the right amount and then with the same technique you can add the rest of the fire amber elements to fill up your scene and one final tip i can give is adding a little bit of camera movement so for that again create a new adjustment layer let's rename it to camera movement search for an effect called transform going to drag it on top we can add a simple punch in by just animating the scale values so press on the clock watch next to the scale then on your adjustment layer that you have your camera movement press u and then change the value to 105 you can also add very small movement by animating the anchor point so i'm going to press alt and click on the stopwatch next to the anchor point then i'm going to type in wiggle 0 0.5 comma 5 
If the edges are showing black, then you can also slightly zoom in to maybe 100.5 and that should fix that. And that is the end of the tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and share it if you learned something. And also don't forget to check out our visual effects stock footage collections such as this forest fire, large ground fire and fire ember elements. And I'll see you next week on Saturday. Thank you. Bye.